It's time to find your next Chevy truck and forge ahead. Take on new challenges and take it to the next level. It's the perfect time to do more in your next Chevy. Find new possibilities, find new roads. Very well qualified buyers can get 2.49% financing and $1,000 cash allowance on this Silverado. Plus, unlock your code to claim $500 Chevy Cyber Cash on most Silverado 1500 Crew Cab pickups. Watch WKYT Newscast live and on demand on View It. Good evening, I'm Amber Philpott. Each and every day, the stories that we cover here at WKYT change. But for the last three decades, the one thing that has remained the same is my trusted colleague and friend, Sam Dick. And after all this time, he is retiring. So tonight, we invite you to sit back as we reflect on and celebrate Sam's stellar career. Sam Dick live in Washington, D.C. In Biloxi, Mississippi. Good morning from Camping World Stadium in Orlando. A lot of questions, of course, as to why and how this happened. Since 1987, Sam Dick has been the face many of you have turned to for the state's biggest stories. I think you have to be out there to feel the moment and to see people and see them face to face. Moments that defined us and the stories that took you from your living room all across the state, the country, and even the world. A career built on seeking the truth, getting it right, and sharing stories that mattered. This is Sam Dick, journalist. Sam, <laughs> what a career it has been. Yes. We are celebrating 44 years in broadcasting, 37 of those right over there, 34 of those as the evening news anchor right over there on that evening news desk. But you are stepping away very shortly. I know. It seems like time just flew by, Amber, but it also feels like it took a long time to get here because when I walked in the door in 1979, I was 23 years old, had no thoughts of anchoring, had no idea where my career was going to take me. And now at the age of 65, after 44 years in broadcasting, here we are. And uh, what an honor it has been to represent this station, mm -hmm. to sit alongside of you for 16, 17 years now to be a part of what we believe here is good community journalism and uh, to do it in a state that I call home. Mm -hmm. I was born in Lexington, and so this is home. And so the viewers, you have been tremendous, mm -hmm. and I will thank you a number of times, but thank you for watching us all these years. Well, we want you to sit back, and tonight <laughs> we want to take you at home along with us as we look back on Sam's career. Sam will tell you that he never intended on being an anchor. He <laughs> was in it for the stories, and you name it, from the state's worst moments to some of the best, Sam has been there covering the stories that were important to all of us. Six o'clock. Uh, a Com Air flight 5191 was leaving from Bluegrass Airport towards Atlanta and apparently just uh, moments after taking off crashed. The CD-ROM released by the NTSB today in Washington contains hundreds of pages detailing the crash investigation. And we finally learned the name of that lone air traffic controller. A lot of the damage that you have seen on television the last week and a half has come from areas like this along the Gulf Coast. This is Biloxi, Mississippi. But there are people in towns north of here who are still suffering. The mobile home went this way. You can see how ferocious the winds were pushing everything from that mobile home right into this tree and down the ridge and through a valley. It's been tough. It hasn't been bad for us if we've got a motorhome. If you haven't got a motorhome, I, I feel for these people. They slept in their cars and trucks parked on Interstate 75 near the Kentucky-Tennessee border. Thousands of people stranded for 24 hours battling the cold and boredom. Officer Ellis's cruiser has been parked out front here of the Richmond Police Department uh, all day. And as we've said, people have been coming to pay their last respects. You can see right now, as the dinner hour approaches, a lot more people will be here. Late last night, two trains collided. It was a violent collision that could have been much, much worse. I'm going to step aside let you see what's happening right now because this is a very active scene. They've been working really hard to get this track cleared. The scaffolding and the flags are up for Friday's swearing-in ceremony, but first, here in the nation's capital, one of the top inaugural balls honoring Kentucky is tonight. You ever seen anything like this before, what the um, scene looks like? No, I haven't, Sam. Um, Lincoln County Sheriff uh, Kurt Folger says Deputy Colby Reich, who's in the hospital right now, doesn't want to speak on camera. But the sheriff is very happy to talk about what his man did in an intense, deadly situation. This couple, they this, could have very well have died without his assistance. They would have they would have perished if uh, if uh, my deputy, Kobe Reich, hadn't have been there 
at the right time. Thank the Lord. Sam, there were so many of those moments. No, it's so interesting because very little of that was from the anchor desk. Mm -hmm. And as you have done so well for many years, uh, I love getting out there and being part of the story, not in the sense of the story, but the person telling the story. And to do that, I think you have to be out there to feel the moment and to see people on there, see them face to face. Mm -hmm. Uh, I immediately had some emotions with the first clip because that's flight 5191. And uh, it, it goes down in my 44-year history as the probably most singular important day of my broadcasting career because I got the phone call about 6 o'clock in the morning from my news director. who had only been here two weeks, Robert Thomas, and he very simply said, we think there's been a plane crash. We need you to come in. And that's all he said. But it was so important. Uh, that we covered that story with compassion and respect. And deep in our hearts, we knew that there were people on that plane either that we knew or people we knew who knew those people. Mm -hmm. And my hat's off to everybody in that newsroom that day mm -hmm. that helped make that happen. And, and that's community journalism. Mm -hmm. That's what we do here. Yeah. A lot of people might think you are the son of a former CBS news correspondent, mm -hmm. that journalism was going to always be on the table for you. I know. But you have said that it really wasn't. <laughs> but one thing I love is you said the first time you ever stepped in, into a newsroom setting, you love the smell of it, you love the feel of it, you love the taste of it, and you were hooked, right? I was. And, and maybe that sounds weird uh, to some people out there, the smell of a newsroom. But I love the energy of, of it. It was... Uh, WTVJ in Miami, and I had sent out 50 letters as a junior in college saying, I will come work for you this summer. Let me sweep the floors. Let me do whatever you want. I don't have to be paid. I don't have to get school credit for, for it. And I, I landed at Miami, and some of that credit goes to my dad. And for three months, I worked, I, and I say work, to me it was play. I was in that newsroom, Amber, every single day. First of all, I didn't know anybody in Miami. But second of all, I just soaked it up. I loved it, and I got to learn how a news crew works. And I learned from some really good reporters, and I got to shoot some and edit some. And then they actually aired some of my stories, and that's what helped kick my career off, really. You have a work ethic like nobody's business. Where does that come from? And also, you have this drive to always want to be there and to be a part of the story. So much of our job, I really think, is, is good preparation. Like when we go on our NCAA uh, uh, trips, we don't start thinking about the moment we land in New Orleans or Charlotte or New York or all the many cities you and I have been to, Indianapolis. All those things take preparation. And um, I, I want to make sure that I'm at my best when I'm on camera because a lot of times it is live. And as you know, what we say, when it comes out, it is out there for everybody to see and to even take apart a little bit. You know, we gave people a glimpse of some of your big stories, but one of the biggest stories that you were able to tell out here on this set was your own personal story and your own journey with prostate cancer. Yeah. And that was very important that you wanted to share your story, but you've also been able to help so many people throughout the years with that. In a lot of ways, my life has been an open book. And, and when the prostate cancer thing happened, I had just lost my dad to prostate cancer. And uh, I knew when I was at his funeral that I had had a bad test. But I kind of put that off to the side so I could take care of family business with his passing. And then within a month, I had uh, the first biopsy, and it showed that I had cancer. And so what came out of that was really a beautiful thing is that so many men uh, you know, it's been over 10 years now. Even to this day, I hear from some, but especially the first five, six years, so many men would reach out to me on the phone who just needed to hear what I had been through or maybe to kind of talk about what they were thinking about doing and just needing a little bit of support there on the phone with somebody that they trusted. And, uh, and I, my hat's off to all those people that, um, that trusted me for that. Uh, it was a special thing. Through your anchor work, all of the work in the field, you've become someone that I have been with you when they have said this. There's that trusted newsman. There's <laughs> Sam. What does that mean to you as you now get ready um, to enter a new chapter in your life, thinking back over all of those years, and that you have that title that goes along with it? I, I, as you know, it is a daily, I'll use the word grind, mm -hmm. it is a daily thing. You're really only as good as your last newscast. 
And so for thousands of people out there that tune us in, whether it's at 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock or 7 o'clock or 11 o'clock at night and early in the morning, uh, we want to make sure we're at our best, even though we may have something personally going on or we may have an upset stomach or in some cases with other co-anchors, they were pregnant and getting ready to have a baby like <laughs> Barbara. Uh, we, when we're on the air, this, that, that anchor desk, that's it. That, that's, we, are, we are zoned in. We are focused. And I think you only have a legacy, hopefully, that I've, I've left of being trustworthy and, and, and honorable and fair through day to day to day, month by month, year by year, trying to get it right every time. Since opening our doors 75 years ago, Central Bank has made big changes, like the region's first Saturday hours, online ATMs, and even the area's very first vault. But one thing will never change is the community-minded mission of our founder. Garvis D. Kincaid believed that what's good for the bank should also be good for its community. True back in 1946 and equally true today. So, come see how we've grown. Central Bank, central to you. Member FDIC. When you're choosing a gift of jewelry, it can't be just anything. It needs to mean something. As Sheila Bay's Jewelers, we work with you to learn her style. You'll find something perfect that says you know them. And we can do it affordably, starting at just $50. You can choose from our designer jewelry collections like Memoir or our fantastic bridal collection, including Sylvie. Sheila Bay's Jewelers, now at Lexington Green. Nothing like cheering on the Wildcats. And for Sam, he got the best of both worlds here at WKYT. He traveled the country with both the basketball and football Wildcats secretly cheering them on the entire time. I would estimate, uh, Barbara, we have maybe somewhere between, I don't know, three or four hundred Kentucky uh, folks here. D -A -T -S, cats, cats, cats. Of course, when you ask University of Kentucky fans here at the Superdome if they think Kentucky's going to win, they all say, of course Kentucky's going to beat Michigan on Saturday night. Do you guys know why Coach Patino, who used to go to this school, why, why, is, why is he in New York? Because he's going to play in the medal with the Final Four. Is this your first time anywhere near here? Well, I've been in Puerto Rico. I haven't been to Dominican. You know, I talk to my team all the time about service leadership. I never thought I'd be doing something like this. And sitting next here to Coach Cal, and in Haiti watching. I mean, this is this has got to be like a dream. The hallmark of any CBS broadcast of the Final Four is the piece "One Shining Moment." That process begins in New York City and will end here in New Orleans. The, the Kentucky Wildcats national champs bring home number eight, beating Kansas tonight. Robin Amber, 67 to 59, and they're dancing in the street. And I walk into the team meal at breakfast. There are raisins in the oatmeal. I look in. Are you kidding me? I grab the bowl and I throw it against the wall. Who is responsible? Who? The victorious Kentucky Wildcats beating, grinding it out against Penn State, 27-24. And, Brian, this could be a program changer for UK. We came a long way. <laughs> we came a long way. Quick, quick story, 1996, we're in the Meadowlands for that first national championship that I got to cover. Rick Pitino's mm -hmm. the head coach. It's a semifinal game that night uh, in Kentucky. I forget who they're playing, but I had a press pass, and I was on press row. And so I'm watching the game. Now, secretly, I'm a fan of UK, but also professionally, I'm supposed to be there mm -hmm. as a uh, fair uh, observer. Well, I start to grunt, like, they're, oh, oh, oh. 
And the guy next to me from some small newspaper in Iowa goes, you can't do that here. You've got to be quiet. I was like, okay, I got it. So, yeah. But uh, part of that, uh, what you just showed, was I was able to find the actual elementary school where Rick Bettino went as a child, I believe in Queens, to the actual school, to the actual classroom. And back then, things were different. The teacher pulls out his report card and shows it to me. And today, that never would have happened. But I just thought that was part of, it went beyond basketball. Mm. You know, we're, there we were finding a little bit of slice of, of Rick Pitino's life to show our viewers they ordinarily wouldn't get to see. Fun fact, so you have three national championship titles mm -hmm. under three different coaches. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like being in the middle of a Final Four atmosphere, is there? It is unreal. The fans, the, the big blue fans are tremendous. The excitement, when we're live on the air together, you can just feel the energy. And of course, here's the thing, you know, you, you and I were there in 2012 with Cal, about halfway through the game, we usually have to go running back at some point in the second half to get ready for the broadcast, the whole time trying to keep our ear to whatever we can to see what the score is going to be. Uh, and, and, and Amber knows this so well because she works so hard as, as, as I did on these trips. It's pretty much 8.30 in the morning, 9, 30, 9 in the morning till midnight or 1 o'clock. We're going full, all out working. It's not second, sitting back in the front row with a pop, bag of popcorn just watching the game. I mean, we're there as working journalists. But it also is a great, great experience. So uh, Patino in 96, Tubby Smith in 98 in San Antonio, mm -hmm. of course, Cal with his first championship with the UK in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. You covered a lot of sports stories, but one of those stories is extra special, I know, to you, is when you were able to travel with John Calipari yeah. to Haiti. You saw a little bit of that. That story really means a lot because you never could have imagined you would be there oh. washing the feet of children. We, we had had a telethon here the year before for Cal and the team, and we helped raise a million dollars with him leading the way for the people in Haiti that had gone through an earthquake. And then, lo and behold, less than a year later, I find out I'm getting to go with Coach Cal on a private plane to Haiti, which is a poverty-stricken country, just really in bad shape. And there I am with Cal, walking through the streets, talking about uh, some things with Haiti and the, and, the, and the Red Cross. And then we find out we get to go to an orphanage. Mm -hmm. And Amber, we walk into this orphanage, and all these kids have these little, like, Catholic uniform, really nice little uniforms on. And they're all laughing and smiling like it's Christmas, not because Cal's there. They have no idea that they're with one of the most famous basketball coaches in, in the world. They're there to get a pair of brand-new shoes. And before we do that, with Samaritan's Feet, this organization that does this, we wash the children's feet and then give them their pair of shoes. Who could ever have come up with that? Sam, this is what you're going to get to do in your career. And it was, it was uh, memorable. So My was, favorite moment with you is 2012, doing the news, championship night, mm -hmm. in an RV. But do you have a favorite moment? <laughs> well, it, it, we had been on a scaffold, <laughs> and uh, Chris Bailey was on the trip, too. And uh, we, we saw the thunderclouds around us. This was early, uh, late afternoon, early evening newscasts, all on the scaffold with all these stations from around the country. And all of a sudden, this police officer, woman, comes running through the parking lot and says, you need to get down. The, you know, the lightning, thunderstorm. So we hustle to get all that equipment off the structure and also pray to God that we're not going to get struck by lightning and die on the job. And we had an RV, and so we set up the broadcast for the rest of the night inside this RV. And you saw Rob and Amber there and myself. And, uh, you know, that's part of what this job is. You, sometimes you just got to get it done. You just got to get it done. And if it's in an RV, it's in an RV. When you're named the number one hospital in Kentucky for six straight years, it comes with enormous responsibility. A responsibility that we are honored to hold. It means that no healthcare challenge is too big or too small. It means that we will always show the best of us. It means that we are the hospital to meet the healthcare needs of the Commonwealth. The best in Kentucky, the best for Kentucky. UK Healthcare, the power of advanced medicine. When you're checking out, win it, win it. to debit your account, win it, win it. it knows the right amount. So wave, wave it when you buy, wave, wave it on the fly, wave it, wave it. it's the card that's so secure, win it, win it. it's faster, that's for sure, win it, win it. wave the debit, that's a must. It's a better way to pay, apply for one today, just From wave, community it. Trust. wave it, wave it, wave it. 
Now you can get Spectrum Mobile for just $29.99 a month when you get two or more lines. $29.99! You get unlimited data and 5G included. And you get the most reliable service coast to coast for $29.99. Mind if I cut through? No, go ahead. And you also get the fastest overall speeds for just $29.99 a month. $29.99? Oh, I know. It's very good. This is thousands of hours of advanced research and development. It's a better way to mobile. Spectrum Mobile. Call, click, or visit a Spectrum store today. to seek out some of the most interesting people and places allowed all of us to go right along with him. It seems for Sam there wasn't an assignment he wouldn't take on. No adventure too big or small. Yeah, so We're here to watch them train for a high cliff rope rescue. We train and train and train to go where people can't and that's what we do. We'll come and get you. This is pretty amazing. Sit here for a second. Okay. I still think the key is not for me to look down. So I'm... The first moment of truth arrives. I've gone weightless, and uh, it's a pretty wild feeling. You're trying not to flail. Just hang on to the strap right here. You don't want to kick somebody with a boot. This is unbelievable. They warn you that there's no turning back, no matter how sick. <laughs> On the ridge, they set backfires and prepare for a long night. It's just after 1 a.m. Spending an evening on the fire line with the hot shots gives you a real appreciation for their dedication and teamwork. Up here on this ridge, surrounded by fire and smoke, they're all business. It's not 9 to 5. It changes every day. You know, something... It's just, just different. Nobody else does it. Well, I'm locked into position. I guess I'm the co-pilot. I'm ready to go. And uh, this is going to be a thrill of a lifetime. It's going to be hairy. The initial takeoff was so fast, I didn't even have time to think about it. And after a roll, I went straight up, did a loop, more rolls, upside down. The depository is called the most secure building in America, if not the world. It is, it's impossible to go any further than this. Is that correct? That's correct. You can take pictures of observe from there. Please do not come any closer. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, you heard the man. You can't go any further than this line, and we don't know what happens when you cross this line, neither does anybody else, but we do know that it could be very dangerous, and we're not going to try and do it. <laughs> That's, but those, some of those stories from PM Magazine, mm -hmm. which uh, aired here from 1979 to 1982 mm -hmm. every night, it was a family show, and we took you on adventures and, and told stories of people that, uh, uh, feature stories of people that w we wanted to tell. Our colleague and friend Bill Bryant said of you, he's like a curious child when it comes <laughs> yeah. to stories because you want to get in the middle of those stories. You yeah. want to tell everything you can. He is notorious for having a yellow legal pad with him all the time. You just love telling people stories and good stories. Yeah, and, and I... I I'm afraid of heights, Amber, and there I am with the Blue Angels, and yes, I got sick on that plane flight, and then there I am on the, quote, vomit comet over the Gulf of Mexico with UK students doing some scientific experiments, and as you saw very clearly there, I got sick again, so I don't know why I didn't learn my lesson, but, and then the thing with the, late, this past summer with the search and rescue team out of Powell County, I didn't really realize I was going to be the victim, and I didn't realize how far we were going down, and so I mentally just said, all right, I trust these guys, I'm just going to look straight up. A lot of people wonder if we get to choose our own stories, and mm -hmm. you and I are afforded that opportunity. How did Sam Dick choose his stories, or did they find you? Well, I just think that I want to tell stories that maybe people didn't understand or didn't realize what was part of the story, like with that search and rescue team. These are volunteers, and they train, and they train and train, and not just hear the little 30-second clip on the news that they, they found somebody. Um, and, and with the Blue Angels or the Vomit Comet, take you with me. And so if I get sick, well, you're going to get, you're going to see me get sick, you know. Our viewers are so very important to us. What have they meant to you all these years? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Almost without exception, Amber, when I'm out in public, 
people are so kind. They've been so supportive. Uh, we, we can work as hard as we do, but if we don't have people paying attention and getting something from it and watching us, then it's really not, it doesn't count for anything, really. Uh, so, you know, my heart goes out to all those people out there all these decades, many decades, who say, you know, my grandmother used to watch you all the time. Uh, and all those people out there, young and old, that have been so loyal to WKYT and to us, um, you are why we do what we do. It's community journalism, it's storytelling, and, uh, you know, sometimes I don't get things right, people let me know about it, but that's, that's part of the job. Before we get to your final thought, what's next for Sam Dick? Well, I've got a fishing boat out back here at WKYT <laughs> that has been sitting there for months now that I haven't been able to do much fishing with. So hopefully I'll be able to do that. But, but seriously, also spend more time with my wife, Noelle, uh, with my family. I have one child in Los Angeles, another in Wisconsin, another one that just got married, perhaps some grandchildren on the way. Uh, just being able to have a chance to travel and to just not be on the clock and relax a little bit. And, uh, you know, I love the lake and I love the woods and I love getting my hands dirty. And so I'm hoping I get to do a lot of that, too. Sam, I want to say thank you for being my trusted partner here on the news desk. Thank you for allowing me to grow up with you. It has been a pleasure for 17 years. I've learned a lot from you. And now I want to hear your final thoughts. Well, you stole some of my thunder <laughs> right there. Um, a huge thank you to Amber and Chris Bailey, who... I've sat with on that desk for 16, 17 years now. And uh, through thick and thin, especially the last couple of years with this pandemic, I have needed their support. I have needed Chris and his humor to get us through. I've needed Amber's support and friendship. And so I thank you and Chris for that. Uh, you can't put a price tag on that. Uh, to my wife, Noelle, of 26 years, has sacrificed and sacrificed. And yes, when I ask for an opinion, as you know, she can have a strong opinion. And she'd tell me like it is, not maybe what I wanted to hear. And so, Noel, thank you for your love and your support and your friendship. To my three kids, Sam, uh, Leah, and Christina, thank you. You have sacrificed a lot growing up because of my job, and I thank you. To also to my step, uh, to my, excuse me, my mother-in-law, uh, Connie in, in St. Louis, tremendous support all the way. Connie, thank you. And then to all the people at the station here and all the people in the past four decades. Amber, there's so many people that have, I have, I've, that have touched my life. Producers and editors and videographers, our general manager Jeff Anderson and those who preceded him, our news director Robert Thomas and those that preceded him have been so supportive of me and given me so much freedom to do some things I've done that we've seen tonight. Thank you all. Uh, the people behind the scenes, the directors, um, uh, promotions folks, all of them have been instrumental in making this a wonderful, wonderful career. I could not ask for any more. I am blessed. Since opening our doors 75 years ago, Central Bank has made big changes, like the region's first Saturday hours, online ATMs, and even the area's very first vault. But one thing will never change is the community-minded mission of our founder. Garvis D. Kincaid believed that what's good for the bank should also be good for its community. True back in 1946 and equally true today. So, come see how we've grown. Central Bank, central to you. Member FDIC.